Hey guys, good morning, happy new year. I'm going to show you what I've been working on, which is more of the battle stuff. Uh, trying to get the battle screen really refined before I uh, move on with too much actual game content. So I have a pretty good idea of what I can and can't do with commands and what spells to give classes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna clear this second file here and I'm gonna play a game. Hit random a few times. And then it just places us in the prison with our default stats. I'm going to turn battles on. And I'm going to demonstrate what I've done. Uh, there may be some slight changes to the battle here. I don't think I have these margins and I think I've moved these around a bit. Obviously continuing to, yeah, just play with the space that I've got. So, I'm going to demonstrate what I've been working on with these three commands on the right here. That all of my characters have. I'm going to start by leaping. And you'll see that the guy, he does a jump, gets in front of him, really mows into him with the sword right there. And he'll actually keep going until the target has died. At that point he jumps back to his original spot and he does a cheeky little victory dance. You know, just playing around with the uh, animation controls. So I'll finish these guys off with one more leap and then the rest of them I'll just attack, I'll get into another battle. Yeah, so the big thing there is the the jumping. I could like expand that, I could have a multi-target attack that jumps between all of the enemies and hits them. I could do more victory dances in between, all of that stuff. So yeah, that gives us a bit of freedom to do some acrobatic styled commands. Now, next up, breath. You can see it's a multi-target, it will hit all enemies, so let's go ahead and hit. And that cleans them up pretty well. It's a strong spell hitting 60s there. What I neglected to mention with Leap is that the attacks that were happening were about 20% of the power of a basic attack, that's why it was only 2s and 1s. I'll go into another one and do Breath again. So what's happening is it's an attack that hits all. And from the source, which is the player using the command, uh, it's reusing the heal particles I have, so that's why, I mean, if you can imagine that they're like a, a dragon breathy attack, they're little fiery particles, it probably make a little more sense, that's what I was going for, but I was just reusing my little, yeah, my little healing star that I made here a while ago. It's more of a particle attack, where it sweeps the whole battlefield, with the stars and you can see that first the top enemies are being hit then the bottom are being hit. What's happening is uh, if you imagine like an imaginary line towards where all the particles are being shot of course there's a little bit of a spray for the actual particles so it's more of a cone. Yeah it just shoots up towards a point in space and then it goes straight down and the line tracks that kind of looks like it's going in a cone the way the particles rotate towards it. Yeah as that line passes the enemies, uh, if they haven't been applied damage yet, it hits them with the damage. Uh, and there's also a subtle glowing effect that's happening as well when I do breath, so straight away when it starts, all of these, they're essentially heating up, uh, so yeah, they're kind of heating up to match the coloration that they would have if, for instance, they were being scorched with the fire, you know, it's a nice little added effect. Yeah, and the last one which is probably the most effort here is my Meteor command. This is like going to be a full stage. So I'm going to do Meteor again. It hits everyone and we'll see how this goes. They go forward, enemies start to shake and you can see my gigantic crude boulders are falling from the sky. They're taking very low damage just so testing that they don't die fast because yeah, you can see as the gigantic meatball hits the ground. It's probably to the right a bit too much but the rate of the random damage that the enemies are being hit by actually accelerates towards the end. That's an example of a command where the animation and the battlefield stuff is actually not synchronized with the damage numbers. Uh, separate things are happening where, the, where all of the enemies are taking random damage uh, as the spell plays out and then as the big boy drops that rate is being accelerated. So I'll play one more time. There's the shaking. You can see the twos are hit hitting very slowly. And then as the big one drops, 
Well, it's even further to the right this time. I don't know what's happening there. I think there's a bit of randomness with the big one. You know, I gotta tune it a bit. But yeah, you can see as the big one starts to drop, uh, the rate at the damage the surviving enemies takes uh, speeds up very fast. Obviously, you'd re uh, reserve a sequence like this for a very big command. Huh, that was kind of weird. The, there's something a little funky going on because the rate at which they're taking damage was very late that time. So, I'll have a look into that, but yet the idea I was working on just seeing what I could play around with in the battle space, you know? So, those are the three I came up with. So, to end this off, we'll take a very quick look at the code. I'll try to control myself. So, for reference, a default attack versus a sequence that every spell goes through which is this one so uh, commands beginning the first thing that happens is we do a check to see that the original targets and stuff like all that still sane information the source exists the target exists you know they haven't died or whatever during otherwise we might have to pick another target or cancel the ability but then if it's a player their sequence is they do that small walk forward if it was a spell, there is room for like a casting animation, you know, like a magic circle happens under them or something. It also shows the command name at the top. You could see Meteor was being showed at the top every time that was happening. That happens with pretty much any command that isn't a default attack currently, which is pretty consistent to what Final Fantasy did. Uh, yeah, the player has that animation sequence. The enemy is a little simpler. They simply do that blinking effect. We don't move the enemy at all. Yeah, and then the only other information in here is when this returning flag is set, which is the very end sequence, which practically just reverses what happens up here, right? The the player, when this runs, they will be, they'll have jumped back into that original position, like you could see with the leap command, and then they just take their steps back and, you know, we make sure it's all good. And then right at the very end, we have to check, you know, was that command the game winning command? And then... Yeah, or does the battle go on? So that's what every single command does. On top of that, this is what attack does, which is probably going to be one of the most basic commands. So after we've done all the walking that I talked about in that last object, all this simply does is when it's time for an attack, it has to play the slashing effect, which is this. Ding, 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 ding. You know that one, it's been in the file for a while. Plays that on the target. If it is the player, they also need their battle animations to be set to the swinging the attack and they also have a particle that draws the sword on top of them. The weapon and the actual player swinging animation is separate, so we can change the weapon quite easily. Uh, and then after the animation stuff happens, there's a bit of a delay so we can kind of sync the damage actually applying to more of the, the bulk of the slash, you know. We don't want that to start instantly with the animation. It would look a bit desynchronized. And then we call it uh, spell hit command, which sorts out the battle effect it has, you know, whether it deals damage or heals or whatever. And then we say after that, that's the last thing, so we return. So that's an example of practically the most simple script we have. And for the sake of time, I'll just show off Meteor, which became the most complicated one. This is a little bit longer. You can see here it's got quite the script attached to it. It starts by all of the targets. We give them a shaking effect. Once we finish that, the next thing we do is we start a timer that is creating these comet sprites out of my little uh, sprite here that I quickly drew off. If you want to know how I drew this, I did a giant circle, made the brush lighter, smaller circle, lighter, smaller, and then to make it a bit more cratery, you know, I just scribbled on it, it's very quick, not expected to be final of course. Uh, yeah, it starts spawning those particles, same as we spawn particles, like the healing from the breath, if we already had all of that, we could already give a movement. But while it's doing that also, we've got this ticker down here, damage active. This, independent of the animation stuff that's happening, it's periodically choosing a random target from the list of targets, so anyone that's shaking will be a potential contender and then it hits them hits them with damage periodically and that the rate which is determined by damage delay actually increases as we hit certain stages in the animation namely when this big comet comes down uh, you can see I've upscaled it 
that sets the damage to delay to a second so every second they take damage and then when the meteor actually hits the ground which is checked by this meteor wire check against the the battlefield's wire position it stops we begin what i've called heating up the battlefield which draws that like gradient over the whole screen that big fade out and when that happens the damage delay i've just made it comically low here eight times a second so that's when it was really rapidly hitting and then after that's just clean up uh we fade out eventually when we've done that enough turn all the shaking off uh, at some point we've deleted the meteor object and then yeah when all of that's done we say returning's true and we stop and we clean up fighter dude goes back and it's all good so as it stands right now all spells that a player can do technically enemies can also use those commands without problem uh, they have some changes like most notably they just blink when they're doing a command instead of walking forward and all of that uh, all the animation changes will be ignored if the source is an enemy but they will jump uh, i made that not player dependent so it might look a bit awkward because i don't animate uh, but technically they jump to the target of the ability as you'd expect some might not look right just now for instance like the breath particles they will be created in the right position but I haven't adjusted it for the fact that the enemies are on this side of the screen. They will shoot off into the void behind them. Uh, and with the meteor, right now it's kind of biased around hitting enemies because they fall in this trajectory. The shaking and the damage could all apply to the player just fine. It looked like the big meteor wasn't positioned right. But yeah, that's what I've done. So I've got a lot more freedom in how I engineer commands. And that's what I've done. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I guess you'll just have to find out, bros. I'm out. Thanks, guys.